Today we're diving into an essential topic for developers managing high traffic applications, rate limiting. Specifically, we're talking about the fixed window counter algorithm and how to implement it with Redis and Java. The fixed window counter is the simplest rate limiting algorithm. It divides time into fixed intervals like seconds, minutes, or hours and counts the number of requests within each interval. If the number exceeds a predefined limit, requests are blocked until the next interval. Think of it as setting a speed limit for our APIs. Exceed the limit, boom, red light, no more requests until the next time window opens. Sounds simple. It is. But if you want a more precision, you can explore the sliding window log algorithm too. The link to it will be in the description of this video. Here's how the fixed window counter algorithm works in four quick steps. The first step is defining a time window. Let's say one second, a minute, or an hour. The second step is tracking requests. Use a counter to track the number of requests in that interval. And the third step is resetting the counter. So once the window ends, reset it to zero for the next interval. And finally, the last step is checking the limit. If requests exceed the limit, block the client until the next window starts. Cool, now that you understand how it works, it's time to put our hands in the fire and get our hands into coding a little bit. We're starting with Jetis, a Java library for Redis. We'll create a new fixed window rate limiter class. It has three fields, a Jetis instance to interact with Redis, the window size for the time window, and the limit for the maximum requests. Next, we add a constructor to initialize those fields. Simple so far, right? Here's where the magic happens. We start the isAllowed function by generating a Redis key using a client ID. For example, if the client is user123, the key is rate underscore limit colon user123. The client ID can be anything you need from a user ID to an IP address. It will allow us to create unique windows for each client. Then we use Redis get command to fetch the current count. If the key doesn't exist, the return value is zero. Next, we check if the current count is below the limit. If it is, the request is allowed. If allowed, we use the multi command to start a Redis transaction. Then we increment the counter and set the expiration on the key. It is important to set an expiration because it will define our window limit. Once the key expires, the key will be discarded, which means that our window will be set. Besides that, it's important to use the NX flag to ensure the expiration is only set when the expiration is first defined. If we kept setting the expiration every time we increment the counter, our window may never expire because the expiration will keep resetting. And finally, we execute the transaction by invoking the exact command. By running these commands in a transaction, we benefit from two things. First one is that the commands happen together, avoiding race conditions. And the second one is that the commands are pipelined, meaning that all of our commands are sent to Redis in one network trip, improving performance by reducing latency. And finally, we conclude our function by returning whether the request is allowed. Of course, we can't just write code and hope it works. We need tests as well. For this, we use three different tools. The first one is test containers to spin a new Redis for every test we run. The second is JUnit5, our trusted testing framework everybody's used it to. And finally, I'll search J to make assertions easy to read and write. The first step is to create a test class named fixed window rate limiter test. Inside, we'll define three main components the Redis test container that is going to be used for launching a Redis instance in a Docker container, the Jetis instance, which will be used for connecting to the Redis container for sending commands, and finally, our RAID limiter, that is the actual fixed window RAID limiter instance we're testing. But before we run any tests, we need to make sure we are connected to our Redis database and that the database is clean. JUnit allows us to define a method that runs before each test, where we'll set up the connection with the container and make sure the database is clean by sending a flush all command. After each test, we also want to make sure we close the Redis connection to free up any resources. Again, JUnit allows us to define a method that runs after each test. And this method will simply tell Jadis to close the connection. Now that we are set up, we are ready to implement our first test. Our first test will ensure that requests within the limit are allowed. In this test, we will configure a rate limiter with a limit of five requests and a 10 second window. Then we'll call the isAllowed method five times, expecting that each call returns true, confirming that the rate limiter correctly tracks and allows requests under the limit. Let's run it. Cool. All good. All working. So let's go to our second test. In our second test, we'll verify that requests above the limit are denied. For this one, we'll configure a rate limiter with a limit of five requests in the 60-second window. 
Then we'll call the isAllowed method five times and expect each call to return true since they're within the limit. On the sixth call, though, it should return false, verifying that the rate limiter blocks requests beyond the allowed limit. Let's run it. Cool, all good again, everything's working. Now let's go to our third test. Now, after the window resets, our rate limiter should allow requests again. This is what we want to test. So for the third test, we'll configure a rate limiter with a limit of five requests and a one second window. The first five requests should pass while the, while the sixth should be denied. However, after waiting for the window to expire, the next request should now be allowed, confirming the reset behavior works as expected. Let's test it. Cool, it's working. It would also be weird if it didn't work in a pre-recorded video, wouldn't it? Anyway, there are many other tasks we could run to make sure rate limiter is working as expected. If you want to check a couple more, don't forget to check the GitHub repository in the description of this video. And there you have it, a fixed window counter rate limiter complete with tasks exactly as it wanted. Try it out and let me know how it works for your project. Got questions or ideas? Drop them in the comments. Stay curious, and I'll see you next time.